One last question for you. Um, obviously, there's going to be a race for the head of the RNC, right? Uh, yeah. Ronald McDaniel has that seat now. Um, where do you see the future of the GOP going? Is is do you support Ronald McDaniel? Should someone else have that position? This is the lead spot mm -hmm. of, of running campaigns and raising money. How should the GOP move forward? Listen, Sean, we need to win. I mean, that's just the fact. Our kids' future depends on it. So, you know, we really all have a responsibility to message what Republican policies bring to this country. And I don't know a party that can continue to lose like we have and keep their jobs. Everybody needs to evaluate what we are doing and is it effective? And are we messaging truly that our policies work? Well, we thought it was just Kevin McCarthy that was going to be fighting for his speakership, but now apparently names are being called like. Oh my God, Ronald McDaniel, head of the RNC. As to how we got ourselves in this position, we need to start winning. I mean, Trump was getting the blame, but apparently also the head of the RNC is getting some of it as well. Uh, there you see Christy Noem wondering, we just need to win, hinting at the fact that she maybe doesn't support McDaniel, uh, Ronald McDaniel for this position though. So the question then becomes, who takes over? Who's gonna really do this the right way? One guy has an answer, let's watch. So talk to us, you, you told the audience, I think on Wednesday night, you were gonna pray that you thought that uh, that God and divine providence was was talking to you or communicating yep. in, in, in your prayer uh, about uh, you actually st staying a CEO, but doing uh, something at the RNC to put your hat in the ring. Where did you come out on this? Well, I, with, with all my due diligence and in prayer, I am 100% running for the RNC chairman against Ronna McDaniel. A hundred percent, I'm all in, Steve. And uh, one of the things that uh, one of the big donors said to me, he said, Mike, he said, everybody wants you to be head of the RNC. Some of them just don't know it yet. Oh, that's usually how it works. Uh, everyone's supporting you. They just haven't figured out that they support you yet. Everyone's gonna know my name as soon as they figure it out. Lindell is upset about uh, the way this was run, but there's a specific reason behind it. Um, let's go ahead and let him continue talking about it. Maybe he has actually something that he's gonna stand up because 100% of the time he prayed about it and God said, Mike, this is your moment. This is one of those reasons though. How about if they say, hey, we put resources in, we can show you where we put money in. We sent people to all these different places, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Arizona. We fought as hard as we could and we put money in there. What do you say to that? I'd say that's a big lie. The money they put in, they very cherry picked where they want it. They certainly didn't put it behind candidates that wanted to change our election processes. They, uh, they, those, they, those candidates got ignored. They got, you know, for your, your Terry Lakes, your Mark Finchams, your Matt DiPerno in Michigan. These candidates got ignored in more ways than one. By Rana herself got, got ignored. And um, they didn't have our back on these election, these problems with our elections. Mike wanted them to have their backs with these elections. They didn't spend the money correctly, but you see how he said there, he said candidates to change our election processes. What does that mean, Mike? Why don't you ask him that question? What does that mean, change our election processes? You mean just kind of eliminate it, change things, make sure the Republicans win every time? That's the vision in his head he thinks is really the problem, especially when it comes to money. We've got more part, uh, thoughts behind that money issue because Mike Lindell doesn't do a half a second of research or even understanding of his reality around him. But before we get to that part, uh, David, um, uh, does does uh, does old Lindell have a chance here? Maybe he does, I mean, I, I can't. I can't overestimate this party. Well, look, if God exists and God is really telling Mike Lindell, you're gonna be the next Republican National Committee chair, that is all the proof that I need that God is a Democrat. Because if you think the Republican Party is in trouble right now, just wait for Mike Lindell to be in charge of the RNC. That would be a disaster. These people are crazy. And the fact of the matter is there is a circular firing squad going on right now in the RNC. It's not sort of the binary choice between Donald Trump and the establishment. It's sort of Donald Trump, the establishment, the people who are the opportunists, the Mike Lindells, the kooks of the world. And they're all firing at each other. And this is great for Democrats because you have some Republicans who say, we don't have a message. We can't just be anti-Democrat. But then it's like, okay, what's the message gonna be if you're gonna actually try to do something. They are a confused party that is also corrupt. And that is a great place for Democrats to be when you look at that as your opponent. Considering God talked to Mike Lindell, that might cause more confusion because I feel like within Republican circles, there's probably a couple more people that said God talked to me too, because that's the go-to line. So what happens when you have three different people that are running for the same position and God spoke to all three of them and said, you're the guy, you're the woman and you're the other guy. Which one do you choose? I mean, God spoke to all of them, right? 
This is God showing a sense of humor and he's creating mass <laughs> chaos in the Republican Party. And again, it just sort of shows the best thing that the Democratic Party could have right now is this sort of infighting and the kooks like Mike Lindell trying to run for RNC and tearing each other apart. That's great. So whether they want to chalk it up to God, whether they want to chalk it up to whatever, I don't know, adult beverages or drugs they've been consuming that cause these psychedelic things going on. Whatever the reason is, it's all fine. Go for it, Mike Lindell. We never know the reason, but here's some facts behind what he's talking about. By the way, again, think about it's the money. How come she didn't spend the money? Spend the money, Rana. What did Donald Trump do, who's Mike Lindell's best friend? Let's look into this from Forbes. Since losing the 2020 election, the former president, his name is Donald Trump, has turned more than $1.4 million of donor money into business revenue by charging his political entities for lodging, food, rent, and travel expenses. If you guys have heard these sentences before on this show, it's because they're the same ones I said like two weeks ago when we talked about how people were trying to figure out, because they lost, what did Trump do with all that money? They're finally starting to think about it, except for Mike Lindell. Here's more, between the time he took office and the day he lost the 2020 election, Trump pushed $2.7 million of campaign money into his private businesses. Millions were uh, were f- uh, flowed into the Trump Organization from the Republican National Committee and the former president's joint fundraising committees. From election day to the end of 20, Trump's political groups spent another $484,000 at his properties. That's according to an analysis of, the, of these filings. The majority of that came via a single payment, $294,000 that went to the Trump Hotel collection on November 12th. Nine days after voters went to the polls, bro. (laughs) And in February of this year, 15 months after the 2020 campaign ended, Trump's committees finally made their last rent payment to the Trump Tower on record. Since then though, the spending has has been mainly gone to Trump's hotels. Save America, which is his PAC, has handed out most of it. Paying 146,000 this year, and that's according to those filings as well. There's, we talked before when I read through these before that Jesse Waters wondered where all that money went as well. Here's one more confusing factor. Ted Cruz asked the same question, watch. I wish Trump was spending some of his money. Trump's got $100 million and he's spending almost none of it to support these candidates. That is not ideal. When Mitch McConnell only spends for the moderates and the anti-Trump candidates, it would be nice if Trump would spend some of that $100 million to help some of these candidates who Mitch is abandoning because they're pro-Trump. Those are the two pockets of money that are there. And right now, neither of them are spending in a number of these states. And both of those pockets stayed stacked or went to where they wanted it to go. Wow, Ted Cruz said something. He's going to be punished for that for sure. <laughs> well, and the fact is, I mean, look, Ted Cruz is onto something. I, this is one area where I agree with him because one of the expenditures that campaigns have in a tight race is called the get out the vote. It's the go TV fund. And an extra $200,000 that could be dumped into getting out the vote, that can make a difference of maybe a two or three tenths of a percentage point on election day. And so, Campaigns constantly think about, okay, how do we spend money? How can we spend it most effectively? And then in the postmortem, they think, God, if we had just spent an extra few hundred thousand dollars here, a few hundred thousand dollars there, in a very tight race, that can make a difference. And so when you look up and see that there's the Save America group, which is reimbursing Trump $200,000 as opposed to spending money on a tight race, that's where you have the political operatives who are just trying to win, who just, it drives them crazy. I can't wait for all these things. Kevin McCarthy sweating and apparently so is Ronald McDaniel. Probably not, but we'll see.